here to fight over saving this beautiful building. The last thing we want to do is hold up the stadium. It's not what we're here to do. We're just here to save a building. When I was about 12 or 13 driving past here, and I always thought it, it had mystery about it. You always wondered what's behind those windows. It was like going back into the 19th century, what it used to be like. It's 1905, right in the middle of the Victorian Edwardian era. This was one of many warehouses right down Madras Street. These particular buildings articulate what Canterbury's growth was right through the 1900s. The floors all carry are 50 millimetres thick. You know, it's, it's that thick each each of the TNG's boards. I like things that are quite quiet, and the building is like that. It's quite understated. It's a warehouse. They're all carry beams, except for one down there, and it's Remu, and don't ask me why that one's Remu. Uh, <laughs> they probably ran out of carry. The proportions of it, and it's just easy to work with. Fell in love with it when we saw it. It was way too big for us, but... Um, <laughs> We've managed to fill it up and make good, good use of it over the years. I love finding beautiful objects, clothing, handbags, footwear, accessories, um, anything that's beautiful. Show these shoes here. Look at the workmanship. We've got 13 tenants out back here. We've got New City Barbers, and this used to be the old stock room. We've always had creative people in the building, designers, architects, and artists. Not too many old buildings left, is there, in Christchurch anyway, so we're quite fortunate to be in one. It has a different character you can't replicate with the new buildings. After the earthquake, we got this up and running for the Christchurch Public Art Gallery. We had about 12 or 13 shows over that period. I know that things like this are just bricks and mortar, but there's something about this place that, when you come into it, it feels inviting. Within a day of the first earthquake, I was buying steel, probably about something like about 10 tonnes hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of steel put into the building. These bolts go clean through the wall to another post on the other side. This is holding the floor onto the brickworks. We've got an angle bracket here that's helping support the front facade. In this case, we've got an exoskeleton over it to strengthen it. Tell us about Roland. Is he, is he a practical fellow? He's very practical. And that's the problem is he knows too much and they can't fool him. This is a cross beam that we put in um, after the February earthquake. All of this work I carried out before we got paid out for insurance. It is saved for many generations ahead. So why, why would it even be considered to be demolished? Do you remember the first time the state indicated the status of the building? Uh, no, it was through the television yeah. announcement. We garnered huge support. A senior executive from Sarah came and said, it looks like we might be able to incorporate your building in the stadium design. It made sense. 2017, they just suddenly changed their minds and wanted to purchase the building. My lawyer managed to put a hold on that. The Crown went away. We were then back to being incorporated. And in fact, the recent plans showed that we were incorporated. It was sitting there quite comfortably, and then they moved the stadium this way a bit, and it got in the way. So I don't know. Each time they do a reversal, are they apologetic? No. No, no apology. We'll just take it. It's just not right. First of all, the Sarah Act and the Regeneration Act. I find those acts incredibly draconian, where you can take somebody's private property 
and not even compensate them for it. And you then have to fight it out in the courts afterwards to get compensation. That belongs to totalitarian states. We've worked so hard, you know, to save the building. We are one of the first to move back. I mean, we're fully tenanted. Just doesn't make sense to us. We've always said to the Crown that we were willing to sell the building as long as it wasn't pulled down. So that's the sort of uh, arrangement we would like if the building has stayed here. Why should it be demolished? It doesn't need to be, so it doesn't have to be, and it should not be. Well, we've got the perfect answer, haven't we? Yeah, we're going to shift it. <laughs> So the building gets jacked up uh, on, its, on its new foundation and then basically gets slid backwards on these little roller skates. Once we get out into the stadium site, then we turn those roller skates kind of sideways and go up the road. Between 250 and 300 metres, we'll be moving the building up to here behind the Kabul Cathedral. So that's the intent and it sounds really easy. All we need to do is make sure it's well tied together and it's got some good foundations. We're saving all the, all the brick and all the energy and materials that have gone into this building. So we're, we're trying to save all that and, and move it down the road and keep it hopefully for, for Roland and the people of Christchurch. It doesn't need to be a battle. It doesn't need to be one or the other. Any business would fit well in this building. You can change it if you want. They could have a rugby museum in here if they wanted. <laughs>